Good morning, folks. Yesterday afternoon, the SDO satellite did a roll. It does this periodically to switch which side of the craft is heated by the sun. Only 171 angstroms will look like this today as HelioViewer does a somewhat remarkable job stabilizing the images, just a bit of shaking in the frames. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get to it over at spaceweathernews.com, and we're finding two dark coronal holes, each with bright sunspot groups to the north of them. Solar flaring remains down in B-class range. Solar wind is slightly oscillating around normal or slightly above average conditions. But the story we're eyeing today is another look at the new sunspot group incoming on the left. The lack of central umbra leaves strong positive and negative cores trailing and leading the group respectively. And with that spread, we have calm magnetic field connections from positive to negative. Central spots, if they were to be born, could disrupt this nice arcade, but until then, it has found utter stability. We put earthquake focus towards the end of the week, and it begins now. The next three to four days will be much more active compared to the five days Earth has been quiet after the big one struck Papua New Guinea on the 21st. We're thinking about Japan, the Andes, and now Mexico comes into focus as well, with the blot echo occurring shortly after a beautiful eruption at the Colima volcano, not far from the capital. It would be lovely to tell you that this took the pressure away, but it preceded the blot echo and may simply be an uptick signal for the region. Top news article today is about water detected to more than 5 sigma confidence in the atmosphere of a hot Jupiter. It's not the first exoplanet with water discovered, but they are getting good at this. Expect the water-laden planet story to become as common as the current stories about exoplanets discovered. Remember, we went from big news when we found one to now we're getting handfuls, dozens of new planets discovered at a time. Well, it's only a matter of time before we get there with the water. Moving on, the snowiest January on record in some parts of the West. How about eight feet of snow in five days? Folks, the flash flood risk won't wait very long either, as the most at-risk areas need to pay attention right now. At cloud level, two twin flows over the eastern U.S. and eastern Pacific will take that snow and cold to New England, where feet of accumulation are expected, but on the west coast, the heat returns. Let's just hope a major melt disaster is not at hand. Let's quickly bounce over to Null School, where we're tilting to see the polar vortex. It's north anchored at the moment, and you can see warmer air is brought up into the vortex as it is not closed, and we've got a complement to the cold coming to the eastern U.S. Stay tuned after this video. I've attached our 2014 polar vortex info at the end, so shots of our star do not close us out today. Wrapping up here, we're in Chile, where the wildfire is easily the worst in the country's history. The entire world's firefighting aircraft fleets have come to help, and as you can tell from above, they need all the help they can get. With more sunspots than expected the last week, and especially with the earthquake calm set to end over the coming days, be sure your notification preferences allow you to get the solar flare and the earthquake alerts. And definitely keep tabs on the earthquake alert maps posted there as well, especially if you live in an earthquake area. Folks, it's imperative for the big picture that you get a grasp on all the topics and events working together to make our world what it is right now. Your free resources will do just that. This week we've been focusing on magneticreversal.org and earthchanges.org. That would be for the pole shift, folks. But of course, there isn't much we can do to take many of your focus away from quakewatch.net. Year 2 success rate is 72% so far, over 80% overall. Don't forget, after the usual ending bits, we've got a two-minute video on the polar vortex from 2014, so don't go anywhere. It's 4.45 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.
Hey folks, this video will visualize the annual cycle of stratospheric polar vortex changes using the Earth Wind map. We will use simply the wind overlay, only at the stratospheric levels in which we are most interested, and we're going to look at January 21st of 2014. North winter, southern summer. At this time, the website we're using was only days old, and people began to marvel at their ability to visualize the Earth system even up through the stratosphere while the northern vortex was powerful. The southern vortex was not discernible and actually appeared weaker in February. But we're going to jump ahead further. At the top, the date within the URL can be manipulated and as one becomes three, we're in March. The equinox, we notice that the northern flow is slightly weakened and divided, while the southern hemisphere appears to begin to gain a vortex of its own. We're going to manipulate the dates one final time to come to April northern spring and southern fall and the southern vortex is now a major stratospheric flow at this time the northern vortex is weakening and when we see our first july in the life of the wind map the reversal will be complete note the delay in vortex response as extreme high or low force occurs shortly after the solstice and the torch is passed between hemispheres shortly after the equinox. They go back and forth like this with strength coming in the colder months for that hemisphere. The cause is a topic of discussion for another day, and a point of controversy between mainstream and new electrical theorists. Be safe everyone.